Welcome to Gardening with Daddy Pete. Let's join our host, Melvin York. Well, hello, everyone. And this is Melvin York. You're listening to Gardening with Daddy Pete. Today, I would like to talk to you just a little bit about uh, September gardening tips. Uh, In other words, what to plant, uh, what you get ready for. And you can also find these tips if you'll go to daddypeats.com, go to our webpage. You can look under uh, the podcast archives and you can pull that up for September along with other topics while you're there. You can also look at our different products and uh, sign up for our monthly uh, email uh, newsletter with gardening tips. We don't uh, sell your email. We don't share it with anybody. It's just between you and us. We will send that out to you every month. So let's get into the vegetables right off. These are some of the things that you can plant in September. That's uh, mixed greens, uh, turnip greens and your mustard greens, um, your different type of mixed greens. They all can be planted uh, early this month. Now, if you're planting turnips uh, in the Piedmont or uh, maybe towards the coast, you may get some turnips, but they'll be small. Turnips should have been planted in uh, no later than the middle of August to reap your uh, turnip harvest. But for greens, everything will still be good. Uh, All types of lettuce, that's another good one too. Carrots, you can do carrots. Cabbage, Uh, cabbage is something if you don't already have your seed sown for transplants, I would recommend that you go ahead and buy the transplant. This time of year, in the fall, I would recommend something like the Wakefield, early Jersey Wakefield variety. It's more of a pointed type cabbage. It grows faster. It doesn't grow quite as tight or round of head like a uh, the Dutch varieties, like the round Dutch, small round Dutch, your body hybrid. Um, and then, of course, again, for the spring, the big flat Dutch, which if you use a lot of cabbage for making kraut or a lot of swallow, you'd like the big variety of the flat Dutch. But this time of year, I would recommend like the uh, early Jersey Wakefield or the Wakefield varieties. They will grow fast. Uh, they work well in the fall. They do grow up to a point, so you've got to keep your eye on too much moisture, and they will start to burst open at the top of the head of the cabbage so you keep your eyes on that green onions you can plant go ahead and plant your onion sets now and actually you can get a double harvest off of those if you plant them in september you should be able to get some green onions uh usually before thanksgiving and uh leave the rest of them in the ground yes they will the tops die back off but they'll come back in the spring so you can go again use those for a larger type onion uh, radishes is another one that you can plant. Um, there's a different variety of radishes. Go ahead and plant any variety of that that you would like. No problem whatsoever on the different varieties. Spinach is one. And spinach is cold hardy. So spinach will hang around with you to the first freeze. Um, frost does not affect the spinach. It'll keep going on and on. So some of these plants, um, what I would recommend that if you haven't started them for seed, um, you go ahead and use transplants. Uh, like lettuce, you could go ahead and sow that out of seed. If you get too much, keep in mind, put it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the freezer, you're ready to go. Beets is another one that you can plant. Beets will hold uh, again. They'll make smaller bulbs, but a lot of people likes the greens off of beets, in which they are good to mix with that in a salad. Uh, so just keep that in mind also. One thing uh, uh, September is good for is go ahead and set out your strawberry transplant for next year. And what I would do is get those set out. When you get those transplants, make sure the center part or what we call the crown, do not bury that or put dirt over that. Uh, mulch up to that point, but leave that crown sticking out because if you cover that crown, you will smother the plant and it will die. Uh, cold weather doesn't affect the strawberry like uh, as far as the freeze goes, uh, especially if you mulch them, they'll do fine. And you'll be ahead of the game for next spring. Your strawberries will be ready to go. When planting strawberries, you want to plant them. I like to use the square foot method, leave a foot on each side, 
of the plant. It gives it uh, um, enough area to grow out. And then it also makes it easier to pick, especially if you're putting them in raised beds. And one other thing, when the strawberries gets done, they're going to start putting out runners. Those runners will actually lay on the ground, reroute, and that can be your sets for next year if you want to change out into a new plant. Uh, or if you'd like to add more and make a bigger bed, there you already have your plants ready to go after you've harvested the strawberries. Different types of strawberries. There are some that actually bears, and they call them an ever-bearing, and by that it means that you get a spring crop and a fall crop off of those strawberries. Plants set out now, you will not get any fruit off of them, but they will be ready to go for next spring, so... Um, you're one step ahead of the game because yours will be already in the ground, already rooting, and they will come on at the time the weather tells them to do that. So they know when to come out and when to start blooming. Um, also, uh, we've got a lot of different bushes that you can plant as far as fruit bushes that goes uh, well to be set out in February. That's blueberry bushes. And there's more than one variety of blueberries, so you can look and see which ones that you do like. What um, high bush blueberries do, there's a type for the mountains and there's a type for the coast. They do better for that. Uh, but what we like is just the regular blueberry bush in the Piedmont. And then if you are more towards the coast, you want to look at the high bush. If you're towards the mountains more, you want to look at that variety of high bush for the mountains. Uh, raspberry, uh, again, several types of raspberries. There's black ones. There's actually um, the red ones, and then they have like a gold or yellow raspberry. Blackberry vines, it's a good time to set those out, set them in a row. Uh, grape vines, again, different variety of grape vines. Set those out where you can make sure that you do have a way um, so that they can run up and vine. Uh, and you'll have to train those vines. You can go online and look at that, and we'll do a podcast on training those vines. Same with muscadines. Muscadines, like um, if you use the old variety, uh, native variety here and uh, around the Carolinas, you know, plant them towards the edge of the uh, uh, your woods or uh, your landscape. They like just a little bit of shade. They like to be uh, something to grow up on. Again, you're going to need a trellis for those to grow up on. Uh, with your blueberries, your raspberries, your blackberry vines, your grapes, your muscadines, make sure that you do uh, go ahead and uh, mulch these in. Now, uh, this time of year, you may get a lot of rain, you may not. So these new bushes need to be planted. They need to, to make sure they do have enough water until uh, early winter gets here and they go dormant. So that's something that you want to do with that also. Now, these vegetables that we talked about earlier, these are also in what we call cold weather crops. They can be planted in the fall in most areas and again in the spring. So anything you've bought seed for, whether it be radishes or your spinach, um, carrots, uh, your greens, all your lettuces, if you buy too many now, uh, you can always, like I said, it's the first of the broadcast. You can put those in a Ziploc bag, uh, put their date on for next year, what variety they are, and uh, burp the air out of the Ziploc bag and throw them in your freezer, and they'll be good to go for next year if you're starting transplants. Now, I don't suggest it so much this year. You're probably not going to get as much now as you would uh, if you will do it in the spring, but you should be... Uh, more uh, than enough time for these plants to go to seed in late spring, early summer. You can gather the seeds up and um, keep them just like you would in the freezer. Use them for the fall after you've dried them. And then again, make sure you got enough to go for the next year too. Label those seeds that you get next year or the previous year, even though you may be using them in the fall, that's fine, no problem. Uh, we've talked about this a lot. And again, keep your varieties down. A garden journal, that is one of the most uh, critical part of your gardening is your garden journal. 
What time did you plant? What did I save seeds off? What variety did I get? How did they do? Do I need to change or try a different variety next year? But most importantly, make sure that everything you buy and you can buy are heirloom seeds. This is an open pollinated variety of seed. And when you save the seed, you will get the exact same thing next year. Hybrids, you won't. Um, and then most definitely you don't want to pick up on the GMO seeds. So make sure that you're buying heirloom seed. If you're not real sure, uh, you can go for a list. In fact, um, I'm going to take time here and it's maybe be uh, later this fall or early winter and go through a list of all the heirloom seeds uh, and different varieties and give you at least the choices for around this area or North Carolina that you can uh, use and save and you know just give you a good idea. Now, there will be more than what I have given you, but um, you know you can do some research and find that. There's a lot of good uh, seed companies that only sell heirloom seed on the market. You can go to the internet and find those too. And uh, there's more and more. There's seed exchanges out there. One thing that I do I encourage you to do, and you know, if you've listened to my podcast before, is to, when you save seeds, share some with your neighbor, share some with someone in another state, as far as that goes, if that works well in their area. And that way, we do keep the same amount of seed going continuously. Um, if we happen to lose our seed, I have done that myself. I've planted seed before, and not come up, it's been as dry or drought, and then the seed get gone. If I hadn't have shared with those people, uh, I would have not had a chance to keep that variety going. Our old seed varieties are getting gone. So make sure that you're part of that and do share that with your other gardeners. It's just as adamant as you are about keeping heirlooms going and wanting a pure seed. Well, I hope that's helped you. Uh, please go to our website and check out our products just for like uh, for planting uh, your different vegetables for your shrubs. And uh, one of the good thing for planting the blueberry bushes, the raspberry, the blackberry, the grapes, the muscadines is using Daddy Peach planting mix. Uh, use 50% of the planting mix with 50% of the native soil you pulled out of the hole and put back in. Make sure that you do mound it up raise that plant a couple inches out of the ground, mound it down where water will drain away from it. Always dig your hole at least twice the big around as what your pot is, and that gives the roots a chance for them to spread out, grow, be stable, to hold in the wind, and will also gives that plant more of a chance in dry weather. It gives it more area to get nutrients and to get uh, water from. When fertilizing, anything like that, fertilize to the outside of the canopy of the plant uh, or to the outside of the hole you dug if it's first time. For the plantings this year, I do not recommend you fertilizing them. They'll be fine just using the planting mix to do that. And then again, for all the vegetables we talk about, if you're doing them in your raised bed, use the Daddy Peach raised bed mix or use the lawn and garden soil, which would be great for either one. And the mulches, you can find that also on our webpage. We have our hardwood mulch, we have a pine bark mulch, we have the mini nuggets, and we do have the soil enhancer. Soil enhancer is good for busting red clay, but it's also a great uh, and a great looking smaller pine chip that works well for a mulch. And in blueberries, you will find they do like a low pH soil, and so pine chips. Uh, is a plus for that because they are a low pH uh, mulch. Uh, you will find the hardwood will be just a little higher in the pH. It usually works well around the uh, blueberries, um, but anything that requires uh, a low pH, uh, like nandinas, like uh, your blueberries, uh, go ahead and use the 
Daddy Peach Soil Enhancer or the Pine Bark Variety instead of the hardwood. Well, I certainly do appreciate you turning in and listening to our podcast. And again, if you do have a chance, go to daddypeach.com and you can go through and just look under the archives for our podcast. Maybe there's a, a uh, question you've got. Uh, if you don't see it there, there is a place on uh, the website for you to ask a question or leave a comment. Uh, if you ask a question, I will get back to you. Uh, I will email you or call you, whichever one you prefer, but I do answer all the questions. Uh, and so if you don't have one, we will get you one. If you're a first time gardener, uh, let me assure you. There are no, and people like to use the word stupid, but there's no uh, wrong questions. Everybody needs uh, to understand what's going on in the garden, and that's what we're here for. Our heart is we help you grow, and that's the reason we do what we do, the reason we do these podcasts, the reason we do answer you back. Uh, we want to see people raise their own healthy food because if you have been to the grocery store lately, if you have looked and got even just uh, 1% of an idea of what's going on with food nowadays in the grocery stores. Uh, or, and I'm talking about um, way more than that. You know, we've talked about the vegetable oils and the seed oils, and that's another big thing that's going on. And why is people having allergies? Why are we having so much um, diabetes now and that's in children? Sugar's not the only thing that's the problem there, okay? Uh, we've talked about the GMO, the fake meats that they're making now out of nothing uh, that's on the market, the fake milk. These are things and things that are going to affect our bodies. They don't know how it's going to even affect it yet. It hadn't been on the market long enough. It hadn't been tested long enough. But yet, it's had the FDA or the USDA approval to go ahead with it. So what we're trying to do is make sure that your family, uh, your children, your grandchildren, your mother, your father, your aunt, uncle, your neighbor, has a chance of having some healthy food. And in order to get that, you're either going to have to grow it yourself or you're going to have to find a good family farmer that is growing it where you can actually watch it and uh, you can talk to him. He'll let you know how it's grown. He'll let you know that he's not using chemicals. He's growing it in a safe way and feeding his family with it. Same way with uh, you have a lot of people that's growing meat, that's selling eggs now. Again, these are local people that you can talk with. Ask them the questions. Okay, They don't mind. They don't mind at all answering your questions because they know they're growing it right. Well, again, thank you for listening to us. Uh, well, I got a little long-winded today, but these are things that uh, I felt like needed to be said. So um, go to the webpage, send us a question, send us a comment, tune in and listen to us again at Gardening with Daddy Pete. I'm Melvin York, your host. Thank you for joining today's Gardening with Daddy Pete. You can check out our website at daddypeets.com for additional gardening tips and our podcast at gardeningwithdaddypete.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify. 